Greening out, also known as whiting out, is a term used to describe a situation where a person feels sick after smoking cannabis. They go pale, turning green or white, and start to sweat. They feel dizzy and nauseous and may even start vomiting. Basically a cannabis overdose. Thought I should let you guys know that in case you didn't know what greening out meant. So, let's start the video. In mid-June of 2018, I had just graduated from middle school in May and would spend the summer vacation with a group of friends I used to have. This friend group were very into vaping nicotine, which I would do occasionally when I was with them. Being fresh out of middle school, I had gone through an adventurous phase where I would basically try anything put in front of my face for the sheer sake of having tried it. On one particular day, I was walking around in the town center a few minutes away from my house with some friends when some girl around my age that I didn't recognize asked us if we'd like to smoke some weed with her. I had a clear schedule for the rest of the day and both of my parents were at work, so I didn't see any reason not to try it out. We walked into a nearby alley next to a deli where the girl pulled out a dab pen with THC in wax form. With my complete lack of knowledge surrounding weed, these terms meant nothing to me and I was just urgent to try it. I had a friend at the time who had tried it, presumably a low to average dose. He had told me that it only makes you feel chill and mellowed out. A couple of my friends took some small puffs while some didn't even inhale. When the pen was passed to me, I thought it would be impressive to my friends to take the biggest hit I possibly could. I would do this on occasion with nicotine to show off the fact that I never cough after inhaling for long periods of time. After about 10 seconds of inhaling, I exhaled and coughed up a storm. For a brief moment, I felt nothing. After about 8 seconds, I felt a tingling sensation in the top of my head accompanied by a severe nausea. I had noticed the girl who owned the pen was looking at me like she had seen a ghost. Her friend had said something to her along the lines of, this dude just fucking killed himself. Hearing this only worsened my concern. I told the group that I had to vomit and ran over to the end of the alleyway behind the building and bent forward to vomit. Nothing was coming out so I sat down behind the building hoping to wait out the nausea. When the nausea was gone, I was ready to stand back up but realized that I felt extremely weak to the point where I couldn't move my legs. My friends noticed me laying down behind the building and ran to my aid. I could hear them talking about how I didn't look so good and how my skin color had gone very pale. Two of my friends picked me up and put my arms around their shoulders to help me walk towards the exit of the alleyway. This is where everything I heard sounded 8-bit like something out of an arcade game. When I had stood up with the help of my friends, my vision had completely gone. What I had experienced was comparable to that of standing up too quickly and everything going black for a few seconds. The only difference is that it wasn't going away. The thought that had raced my mind was that I had gone blind from taking too much THC and had permanently damaged my hearing. Thankfully this was not the case as when my friends sat me back down in front of the deli, my vision had cleared and hearing had returned to normal. I assume in retrospect that these effects were caused by a sudden drop of blood pressure. This would also explain the pale skin tone. After having been sat down, I felt completely paralyzed. This is when the psychoactive effects came in hard. I felt as if all of my thoughts and everything I saw were in slow motion. I was able to talk, but every time I did, I could hear my voice echoing in slow motion inside my head, which quite literally made my thoughts too loud for me to focus on completing any sentence. I basically just went through the process of knowing what I wanted to say, but then being interrupted by the noise of my own mind by the time the words were actually coming out of my mouth. My friends had told me later on that many of the things I said would trail off into nonsense or sometimes even gibberish. My perception was heavily altered. I had felt as if I was just a pair of eyes sitting inside of a movie theater watching everything play out. I saw it as a second consciousness within myself. While I was talking out loud to the people around me saying gibberish, I felt as if I was viewing everything through the lens of my sober consciousness and unable to control anything my body does or what comes out of my mouth. I didn't know how to describe this feeling of watching myself lose control at the time, so I would just chant things like, I'm in here, these aren't my eyes, or this isn't me talking. My friends told me after the fact that I had sounded like I went completely insane. 
I was also unable to improperly sense where my tongue was in my mouth. I had the overwhelming fear that my tongue had turned into a squid tentacle as when I would move it around in my mouth, my mind would picture it slithering around in unnatural ways. Once I hyper-focused on it, it became terrifying to speak as I believed it could accidentally slip out of my mouth, causing me to bite down on it while talking. The town I had lived in was a relatively small town, so I personally knew a lot of people from around the area. People I had gone to school with had been walking or riding their bikes before stopping to observe me. Employees briefly came out of the deli to spectate as well. In my mind, everyone I knew would eventually be here staring at me, which led me to getting extremely paranoid. My sense of time was deeply distorted, leading me to believe that half the day had gone by while the effects continued to stay at a peaking point. It was more likely only 15 minutes in at this point. I couldn't understand a word anyone was saying to me. I just continued to ramble on despite all of the questions and suggestions I was receiving from everyone around me. I was very overwhelmed by everything that was happening and found it even more distressing that the effects hadn't subsided even in the slightest. I started to believe that the only way out was to take the inner consciousness out of the shell of me that was losing control. I had told my friends, trust me, I need to hurt myself to make it stop. My friends got worried and debated with each other about calling 911. Luckily, I wouldn't be able to move my legs anytime soon so I couldn't pull through with my plan to run into the street only 5 feet in front of me. A couple minutes after that thought had crossed my mind, a small part of me briefly woke up causing me to think, what am I doing? I need help before I hurt myself. I had exclaimed to my friends to call an ambulance. The ambulance showed up in about 5 minutes. The paramedic in the back asked me about my symptoms to which I replied with the same description of my eyes not being my own. This statement on its own was enough to lead the paramedic to believe that the wax was laced with something. Tests had revealed that the cartridge wasn't laced, but I had just taken an extreme dose of THC straight to the brain. For about a few days after, I still felt a small bit intoxicated, but to a level I could function at. I have since been diagnosed with a depersonalization disorder. Today I vaporized Delta-8 and HHC, which helped me ease anxiety. I am unable to smoke more than around a gram of Delta-9 cannabis without having intense visuals and flashbacks. I know it's virtually impossible to overdose on THC, but if I had to throw the label on it, I would definitely point to an experience like this one. I thought I'd take this opportunity to dive into the depths of cannabis-induced anxiety attacks. There are those who have chooffed many times and aside from an occasional dizziness in case of mild vertigo, they have had nothing but overwhelmingly positive marijuana experiences, and I am glad. Still, the cases are highly prevalent. A significant amount of my friends have sworn off bud due to the negative effects they have experienced while smoking. This reaction to weed has led to, in my opinion, to the uncertainty many place upon marijuana. Those begrudge with feeling its presence encounter many problems such as extreme paranoia, a loss of awareness, and other symptoms likened to psychosis. My friends and I have a term for such a state, we call it greening out. Greening out has occurred to me several times over the course of my weed experimentation, all of which were extremely similar in their workings. The first time I greened out was several years ago. I was only 16 and a newbie to the art of bowl smoking. I have extremely anti-drug parents, so the idea of smoking cones in my room and blowing it out of my bedroom window wasn't the smartest plan, but being caught wasn't what I had to fear. I am always uncertain when packing my bong, if there's too much, too little, if it's going to get clogged, etc. I was thinking all of this that night, sitting by my window, listening for my parents' footsteps. You see, if the bowl was packed too tightly, then it wouldn't punch through into the bottle and would instead burn and produce smoke, something a kid with anti-drug folks should be overly cautious in avoiding. It seemed like a good idea, therefore, to pack sensible cones, but up the quantity. I was also strapped for time, given my parents' nature to idly stroll into my room at any given point of the day or night, without knocking or giving me any warning. 
It is because of these reasons I believe the anxiety was existing dormant in my consciousness, though it wasn't until a few moments after punching my sixth bowl in a matter of minutes, packed up all the utensils, aired out my room for a bit, brushed my teeth, and hopped and came back into my room did I notice that something was askew. It begins so mildly and creeps from the shadows, slowly expanding its darkness until I am trapped in an internal blackness of thought. In my case, I noticed the radiant warmth of my surroundings as well as my own body. It began as pleasant and gradually turned nauseating. I hopped into bed and picked up a book. After only reading the first line of a random page, a strange sensation came over me. My brain was trying to process an infinite amount of analysis, deductions, philosophies, memories, and anecdotes, all while balancing that with retaining my rationality of my awareness. The elevated heart rate seems to be the catalyst in many instances of the panic attack cases involving marijuana, and it certainly was for me. I remember closing my eyes and feeling wholly the power of my heart, the stress it was under trying to pump blood through my body. The rhythm became somewhat hypnotic, and soon I was finding myself lost in a mental world of backwards turning gears powering double-sided guns. I don't know why I thought of that. I wrenched myself out of that state and ran to the bathroom. It was in here that I lost all logic. I kneeled in front of the toilet bowl and immediately, the crashing waves of sickness came over me. It wasn't my body that was sick, it was my mind. I had to vomit up the evil bile and wicked cruelty that was inside of me. I spewed up a gigantic load of that night's spaghetti, which in my twisted state of mind I perceived to be my intestines. It's laughable now, thinking back on how quickly my rationality disappeared, replaced by a complete knowledge and faith in absurdity. That being said, it fucking sucked when it was happening. The most ridiculous of all my behaviors that night was convincing myself that there was an invisible button on my stomach that, if touched, would cause me to vomit uncontrollably. So much so did my brain decide this was fact, psychosomatically, that I touched the button and, yes, spewed a bucket full. Since that day, I have had similar instances where the feeling occurs, uneasiness, anxiety, heart rate, panic, nausea, and agony. I still don't believe it's the wickedness of weed that caused all this to happen. My current belief is that the problem arises with the uncertainty of having the weed in the first place. Whether the toking, the exhalation, or the minutes following, a seed is planted, or perhaps a seed sprouts, and begins to exacerbate even the tiniest of discrepancies I may be feeling. The only thing I can really say in avoiding these negative situations is not to get in over my head. Drug use is excellent at its own pace, not smoking more than I need, and definitely not smoking when at all uncertain. I'm a relatively frequent smoker of marijuana, and something that really appeals to me in this drug is its potential to cause adventurous experiences. That is to say that smoking weed or hash, unlike for example drinking alcohol or taking benzos, which always ends up taking me to the same sad place, usually feels like a mini trip for me. And when I am high, there are always these little wild unpredictable moments that catch me off guard and give me lots of excitement and love and interest in life and small things. But this unpredictability also means that I have to treat cannabis with some degree of respect, and that is a lesson that I learned the hard way a long time ago, but unfortunately wasn't on my mind yesterday, when I hurled myself at a great chunk of unfamiliar hash and fell into this very challenging field that I had to pull myself out of. For some context, recently I've been smoking pretty often with my girlfriend after work, and it's all been smooth and warm because though we are tired from work, we aren't really stressed and usually don't smoke that much, leading almost always to mellow highs which go really well with lying down, kissing, watching movies, etc. Yesterday though, our headspace was very different from what it usually is because my girlfriend spent the day shooting and I spent it worrying about my own shooting which starts next week. We both work in film, and when we met up, it was very clear to both of us that inside us there was fear, worry, anxiety, and hurt. We did the best to help each other, and I think it worked a lot to relieve the feelings that were crushing us then, but of course, it didn't make it all just go away. So practically in silence holding hands, we took the train to my place and arrived at about dinner time. I'm writing about all this to try and give a picture of the setting of my experience. 
I was full of worry but with someone I love who soothes me, but who is also full of worry. At my place, we kiss and eat, and everything is going pretty well, within reason, until I fuck up and break a glass which doesn't belong to me, but to the landlord whose room I'm renting. It might seem small to you, the listener, but after a long, shaky day, this is the kind of thing that makes the shit hit the fan. I was wrecked and asked my girlfriend to turn off all the lights and we hugged on the sofa under a blanket until I got my feelings to pass, which they did as these fearful, shaky, angry feelings always do. When I calmed down, my girlfriend and I talked and kissed and after a while decided that it would be nice to smoke some hash before bed. Now, the hash that we usually smoke we buy either in the ghetto near where my girlfriend lives from a guy at the foot of some stairs inside a rundown building, or in the ghetto near where I live from a group of guys under the arcades of a house. Fixed plug spots in the ghettos are common in my country. Both hashes are cheap and pretty clean, but relatively mild. The hash that we were smoking yesterday evening, though, was a very recent purchase from a friend of mine who had vouched for it. It looked normal and smelled strong and we rolled about 0.4 grams worth of it with some tobacco and a long thin joint and lit up. And though usually I'm relatively aware of how high I am and how much I should smoke to keep having a good time, something in my mind yesterday made me bull charge the joint like it was a cigarette and so I smoked a lot more than I would and a lot faster too. My girlfriend, who is a lot stronger and more resistant when it comes to drugs than me, smoked her average amount at her average speed. At first, I honestly, and very stupidly, felt that I had kind of undersmoked and would soon have to light up again to feel any sort of noticeable effects. I cuddled into my girlfriend as she showed me a YouTube video and decided that if by the time it was over I wasn't feeling high enough, I'd light up again. But very soon into the video, I started to feel that a much stronger high than I expected was building up, and suddenly, I lost complete contact with the video. Words were gibberish, funny, and slightly unpleasant, and tuned totally and completely into my girlfriend's heartbeat. The beating of her heart was the only thing that existed in the whole entire world. It was the beat of my body and my experience too. It was just everything. I don't know how else to put it. There was nothing besides the beat, and I was water rippling to the rhythm. I don't know how long this feeling lasted because honestly, time wasn't really factoring into it. I was feeling it more like a painting, like it's just there and other stuff may be happening before or after or around it, but the painting's still there. It is what it is. I want to make it very clear that this was neither pleasant nor unpleasant. I only really felt bad during this experience when I felt sick or when the fear of having gone mad popped into my mind, but I'll touch on these later. It was just what it was, and it was huge. It was honestly like something out of an acid trip, but with a different feel to it. Because with psychedelics, these kind of things feel like unravelings, while here, it just felt like distortion. But I like distortion, and when I snapped out of the heart trance, I was feeling okay, just confused and surprised. My girlfriend puts on another video, and again, it's just nonsense. And I get to thinking that maybe screens, media, TV shows, and even movies are brain rot poison that burns out your beauty sensors and ruins the way you feel and experience the world. And I even got to feeling guilty about being in the film industry, sort of as an accomplice to this huge awful thing. These thoughts weren't coming out like this. They weren't articulate. They were cars on the highways, and I could see them in the distance, but couldn't make them out too well. I knew when a thought was coming and felt sort of like, look out, and it came and crashed and I felt all parts of the thought at the same time. This is not uncommon for me with cannabis, but the speed and density of these thoughts was really something, so my confusion and surprise were growing with each moment. Then, while my girlfriend was showing me an SNL skit, I suddenly felt this bad turning in my stomach and very powerlessly realized that I didn't know what my body was going to do next. Normally I think I would have told my girlfriend that I was feeling rotten and I go to the bathroom to try to puke or something, but I felt that with the rough day she had it would be selfish of me to put even more worry on her shoulders. So I decided to sort of fake it and pretend like I was hungry when I was really trying to get something to calm my stomach. I should say that by this point she was also clearly very high, but in a sleepy nice warm sort of way, which wasn't at all what I was feeling though. I got up and instantly felt a lot better. I went straight to the kitchen, got an orange, and ate it right then and there. I also drank some water. By now, the physical strangeness had subsided a lot, but a new uneasiness appeared in the form of scary thoughts of madness, having been laced, maybe needing to go to the hospital, and remembering horror stories of bum hash experiences. 
These thoughts were so strong and they were coming with big colorful images now, exactly like flashes from a dream, like a dream was leaking into my conscious experience. I really hadn't been expecting this. I went to the bathroom and washed my face in cold water and that too made me feel better. And soon enough, I was feeling more in control of what was going on. The thoughts weren't coming so fast. My stomach was fine and I had it together. I went back to the sofa and it was warm and my girlfriend showed me some nice videos. Then we cuddled and touched each other and honestly, I was in the perfect moment of the high for it because I could feel every touch. I was really enraptured by the warmth and it was beautiful and very tender and we fell asleep a little while after. Rereading everything now, I feel like I maybe wasn't able to express why this experience stuck out to me so much. It was really intense beyond words like an acid trip can be, and I felt just as powerless as in the strongest LSD trips that I've had. Of course, it was very brief and I managed to get it together, but there was a moment there when I really doubted what I had been given, and for the first time in my life, I seriously thought that at some point I might pass out from weed alone. I really think that cannabis and I have a nice relationship, but I really should have respected it more than I did, especially when trying out a new product. P.S. I've since tried this devil's hash again, and it's actually perfectly fine. It's just pretty strong and I'd smoke too much of it. I remember having read something some time ago that most of the people who go into the ER because of lace weed are clean traces of other drugs and are just way too high. I think it's probably a good thing to keep in mind when you're greening out that almost surely you haven't been laced and are just very high. But of course, it's up to each person to determine when it's time to call emergency services, even if it's just to be sure. <laughs>